devout to childhood. A period of mourning descends at times. A life has slipped from where it was. Intentions trodden by the days lived. Wishing they were not. Wishing to have lived them with this future melancholy in mind. We do not choose the days we seek to dissolve. That what is there were not there. The days should have been lived with the soul atop the heart. The heart atop the body. Life was lived upside down. There is the melancholy of modernity. There is a romantic malaise. Feeling sad is almost a form of deepness. We were devout to childhood, sensing its sanctity. Sweet freedom flourished in this safe haven. There is a wild strength to spring flowers and a heavy lethargy of summer days. The ghosts of autumn whisper come toward your end. Then there is the melancholy language of the black trees upon the snow. These all seeped through our spirit, and now we have gone past them, unaware of the depth they pressed into us. Whose sins are forgiven should have a bright face, looking forward, not behind. The prelude to life led us to believe our life would be wholly original. Now there seems a sameness to be escaped. And how shall it be escaped? The mournful life of the Messiah is consummated in his eternal glory as the human son of man and in the sonship bestowed to us. You shall be a peculiar treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine. This is a tabernacle without form, a sanctuary not made with hands. This, a gospel originating in heaven. The great thoughts all come down as rain from the clouds above our heads and far beyond our influence. No great thought ever came from the human side. Man has but to reply to you. From you all eternal thought and all eternal feeling, being wise, pure, and beneficent. You do not bend the obstinate will of man, so you begin by seeking consent. Your statutes show your attributes, demanding an obedience which will shape us to your likeness. We shall have a spirit of obedience though we stumble through the actualities. We all have great desire to live, not simply a reconciled life, but to relive all previous episodes of our life. What shall it have been like to fully live the life of an obedient son? We have the illusion that we could get things right. Not by plan of action is this accomplished, but by dealing with the soul of things, with our inner spirit, and with the mood and temper of the heart, our bowels howling to look upon you and to learn to love this great inexhaustible being. It is not by some kingship upon the earth, but by some shepherd's solitude and his upward seeking in the night. Was even Lazarus able to reign upon his life differently after that he had, for a time, lived in the end? Surely we lived more attentively than the man beside us, yet we have this melancholy of what we were to be. Is it best to leave things as they are, as they cannot anyhow be done? We will be of your kingdom as we are, adoring and accepting. We are a royal generation, a people set apart, taking ourselves apart from the army of worshipers. These things are meant for us. We lived as we are covenanted to live, our own willful deeds incorporated. We will not have this body or mind, this history which drags us back. When it is said, I will make all things new, we will live the grace of your offer, unretracing the path which led us here. It is as though you give your love to me alone, and I shall give my love to you alone. Amen.